this is possibly one of my random experiments, but I um I just uh, I read on forums about stuff all the time, and one of the things that um, people talk about is the low pressure or the pressure fuel pressure sensor on the low pressure fuel rail. So I've just been boring, and I bought one off of um, salvage on eBay um, just to see whether my one's faulty. But I thought I'd just get one, and um, I know this is a genuine Land Rover one now because it's um, on a fuel rail that has been taken off the Land Rover. So I'm just going to have a little fiddle about with that. Right, I put it in the vise and I've got a nice big 27mm um, nut to turn on, so I'm going to turn it off. So that's just the fuel rail that I bought as uh, salvage, and uh, there you go. So this is what a Discovery 3 fuel rail pressure sensor looks like. I'll just turn it around a little bit, give you an idea of what it looks like. So this should be on the left-hand side of the engine bay on the fuel rail. So we'll soon find out if I've got one. It looks pretty similar to the oil pressure sensor that's underneath the vehicle so it's going to be doing a similar job just measuring just measuring the fuel pressure so there we have it that is the fuel rail pressure sensor so if we did have to do anything have to get in here it's a little bit um, congested with the EGR stuff but I'm pretty sure that most well I could probably get it off it's just hidden under this um, this kind of materially kind of uh, heat shield thing Part of my random maintenance is just to replace the fuel pump relay which I've taken out um, quite a few times and I've actually damaged it a little bit as in on the plastic casing. I don't think there's a problem with it but um, as the fuel pump has been replaced I thought it was a good thing to actually get a new uh, relay as well. I uh, managed to get one on the um, that auction site and um, it's a genuine Jaguar one so that should be good and it's rated at the same um, the same capacity as that so I'm just going to swap those over and then we've got um, a new relay as well for the fuel pump that's my not very subtle way of getting it out using some old mole grips or some small mole grips that's why it's got damage because I've done it like that should work out a better way of doing it really and then I've got this new one here uh, see so we've got Jaguar written on it which is very cool um, and that just pops in around the same way as the other ones and we just check on it and you can see that it's Pretty much the same spec and get it to show not reflect it's got the same there you go it's got the same rating as the other one 12 volts 40 amp there you go and it fits in there look at that nice shiny new relay right i've got another um other thing that i didn't do when i placed the fuel pump i've got um my um codes to read so um just wanted to check because I was getting uh, faults on the um, low pressure fuel. If I go and read my fault codes, um, press the right button would help. No fault codes found. Now that is quite unusual for my car because recently it's had plenty of fault codes. I'll put up the ones that are in there. Um, I'm just going to have a look at some data. Fuel rail temperature. So that looks about right because I've been out for a ride. Uh, I've been out for a drive this morning and the car's been sitting for an hour or so. So. That's good that the fuel rail temperature is not coming back at something ridiculous like minus a million. Then I'm just going to check another random thing which is uh, water in fuel sensor. So there's no water in the fuel sensor which is in the um, fuel filter housing which is what I'm also going to replace because I've replaced the fuel pump. A bit more here in the ODBC bit. Um, just looking so I've no, not got um, um, a management light. So that status is off. No codes found. Just gonna have another look in here. Reading codes. Hopefully we're not gonna get anything coming back. Excellent. I mean this is I'm slightly astounded because of the first it's the first time I've ever read the fault codes on this vehicle. I think nothing's come back. Just to say that I've got the ignition off, so the engine's not running. So I'm just doing this a minute. So the coolant temperature is good. Air intake temperature is 32. Bit high for the day, but the engine's warm, so that could well be correct. Fuel rail pressure. Oh, there you go. Fuel rail pressure gauge is measuring. I'll have a look at what that means. Battery is good. I'm just having a little look at my fuel pressure um, with the car. The ignition's off, although I've primed the fuel pump. And we are bouncing around a little bit all over the place. 
Um, I've just turned the ignition on again because I turned it off to see whether it would rise, but it's sort of bouncing around a bit. So kind of slightly intrigued by that. I have got that other fuel rail pressure sensor that I've got, so I might have a little bit of an inspection on this. Unplug the car connector and plug it into the one that is just sitting on the side, whether that then drops down to a lower level. So I'm going to have a play with that. So just had a quick check, and 500 kpi is about um, 70 psi, which to me seems a little bit high for a, a car that's not running. Connector came with the sensor easily enough, but actually this EGR valve um, sort of pipe is in the way, so I might actually take it off. There's a couple of bolts down at the bottom, which are hard to see as usual on a Land Rover. So there's one there, one at the top, and then there's a couple of like um, torques on there that I can take off. Uh, probably not going to like what it looks like. I'm not one of these people that's done an EGR delete. Um, I think on 2007 cars it's harder, like the new ones, because it shows up. And also, you go for an MOT and it shows up with a engine management light, you're going to fail your MOT. So. So what I was just planning on doing is plugging in the um, the other sensor that I've got off of uh, the salvage part and just check whether they read the same amount when the car's static. Right, so I managed to manipulate the connector out here and I plugged it into the um, the um, fuel pressure sensor that I've got off of um, the auction website. So I'm just going to have a look at the readings on my um, diagnostic tool with that unplugged sitting in the atmosphere. There's no fuel pressure on that at all. So in theory, it shouldn't really read anything, but let's have a look. Right, so interesting, with that fuel uh, pressure sensor connected, I've got zero KPA. So that's an interesting one. I'll have a little think about this and possibly take out the one that's in there and replace it with this spare one that I've got and see what the reading is then. Okay, so I reconnected the old fuel pressure rail sensor, uh, fuel rail pressure sensor even we've gone back up to 380 kpa so i think i might take a punt on replacing it with the one that i've got all right so we've got our um, pressure sensor there put a bit of tissue on it to catch anything that comes out to stop it going down the original valve as well let's just see i found that um using a long 27 mil spanner kind of fits in and just gives you enough room to kind of crack it off so once you cracked it off, it's, kind of, it's not actually very tight. Um, it comes undone. It's pretty much can be undone by hand. Well, I'm just giving this a bit of a clean up as well, the old um, EGR cooler pipe, um, the recirculation for the exhaust gases, it was a real crusty mess. Don't forget the little gasket as well, that kind of dropped down when I took it off, but it's magnetic so I had a pickup tool and then I just cleaned, cleaned the top as well, so it's a bit cleaner to put it back on. And there is also a rubber gasket on that, so don't forget that. This goes in and it has a notch on it, and so does the um, the gasket. So make sure you put it in round the right way, otherwise it'll probably cause you an issue. It's gonna be a bit tricky, uh, just trying to line it up and put the um, the nut and or yeah the bolt in. So I'm just gonna use this to line up the and hold on to the uh, shim gasket, whatever you want to call it so that it's not going to just roll off we start trying to re-tighten it it's very limited space in here, hard to see as well so that's, with that screwdriver in there, the, the gasket then can't escape then very carefully manipulate the bolt into place As always with doing up a bolt, just do it hand tight to start with. Make sure that you've got everything in position. 
and we can get the manifold inside. So I don't think they need to be crazy tight because they're going into plastic. And then don't forget to re-secure the bracket. It's on here. So there we are. It looks like our fuel pressure um, sensor is now reading a bit more sensibly. It's not reading 70 psi when we're stationary and there's no fuel pressure. Um, I did check at the um, Schrader valve. There wasn't really, you know, little squirt of fuel came out. So it kind of been very well pressurized. And also when the... Um, low pressure fuel system is turned off it, it pretty quickly depressurizes itself so that looks good so possibly fixed a random problem i didn't know i had right so i have got the engine running and i'm just checking this amount here 20 uh, 27 28 kpa um, on the fuel this is just the idle on the fuel pressure so, and then I'm just going to turn the engine off and see what happens. Cool. So I've turned off the ignition, and this is actually dropping this time, rather than before. It wasn't really dropping down. Um, it's now 87, 85, 800, 700, 630. So before it was kind of bouncing around and it wouldn't go down. Well, I've just come back after a few minutes of uh, looking. It's already down. It keeps dropping down gradually. So it will drop down slowly, give it a bit of time, but... At least it's responding now as whereas before it was saying it was at 70 psi it's now down to look less than 20 looking a lot better to me i don't know whether it will affect the car i'm driving it i'm not going to drive it tonight but we will see and i may well report back on the findings of this so random project of the day having a look at the fuel rail pressure sensor and discovering that on my old discovery 3 it was indeed misreading and what's weird is the car drives fine and there's no weird errors or anything coming up. But I just wonder whether it does do anything to the car and change anything or its characteristics. But I'll find out when I drive it whether it's got more power or whether it feels different. So a quick final note on the um, putting the fuel rail pressure sensor back on. Now in the video, the main part of it, I only had um, a great big 27mm spanner. So I actually bought this on the next day delivery website and um, it's like a stubby adjustable but it goes up to like um, quite a big gap so it goes up to 30 uh, millimeters and that means that you can actually get it on sort of even though it's it's hard to show now but if you were just to be persistent you can actually get it on um, onto the fuel sensor and the problem I had is I couldn't turn it enough with the big spanner to do it up tightly enough so it was slightly seeping so I bought this and then I was able to just give that another good turn and nip it up and um, it was all it was all wet around the sensor with diesel but now as you can see it's dry so that fixed that so I recommend before doing that repair just to get hold of one of these and you may even be able to take out the sensor without removing the EGR stuff but um, it definitely was easier with the EGR stuff off and also the advantage of cleaning that end so another job that I would think about doing is cleaning the other side out just so that they're both clean and matching it's one of those things isn't it when you see one side's dirty you want to clean the other side 